think what we'd like to ask you then, given the position that you're in, is probably some of the hardest questions that the church has to deal with, especially in today's world. Um, one of the things that crops up time and time again that I guess the world doesn't understand and they keep asking about is the question of contraception. It seems one of the harder teachings, if you will, of the church. And there's a lot of people who suggest, oh, the church, it's, it's, it's so condemning of people and, you know, it's even killing people because it's not allowing for contraception. And how do you answer that? Well, the church's teaching on contraception is not new. The church has been teaching the same teaching for centuries, for millennia, in fact, right from the beginning. And even non-Catholic uh, thinkers like Martin Luther and John Calvin were also against contraception. Mm -hmm. Now, the basic reason why contraception is denied is because it distorts the human sexuality and elevates the moment of sexual pleasure, whereas it denies the fundamental finality of sexuality, which is the transmission of life. Uh, uh, sexual activity has been created, uh, devised by God as a, as a way of transmitting life and expressing love, whereas contraception separates the transmission of life, which it excludes, uh, and then focuses uniquely on uh, the pleasure, which generates, as a result, egoism. And so contraception, the main reason why the church says no about contraception is that it destroys the quality of love and marital love, uh, which is a way of expressing uh, the, the graces of the sacrament of matrimony, which is a way of living out the divine charity which is infused in the body and soul of the spouses. Uh, uh, this marital love is to be of the supreme quality, whereas contraception boils down to uh, the saying of a spouse, uh, there's something in you that I love, but there's something in you that I hate. And I hate the fact that you can be a mother. So I require that this will be poisoned. Uh, no, this is not love. It's not possible for a husband to, to say to his wife, I love you truly, if at the same time he demands that she poisons in her body the capacity to transmit life, to be a mother. And that distortion of sexuality distorts human relationships, distorts the entire living out of the human sexuality. When sexuality is not tied with the virtue of chastity, which uh, trains the person how to integrate the sexual desire within charity, uh, then everything is rocked. Uh, and certainly we are seeing this once contraception became so easily available. And we're seeing successively the distortions of sexuality and, and problems on the level of human relationships, of marriages broke, breaking down, of a, of a violent aggressiveness of women who are discovering that they are being abused as a result of contraception and so they're landing in an aggressive feminism with a rage against men. Mm -hmm. Contraception is leading to abortion because it treats the child, <coughs> the potential child, as an enemy mm -hmm. and if something goes wrong and the child is conceived then the child is easily aborted. So contraception being fundamentally against life uh, it's against the human person, against human dignity. Mm -hmm. Today, because contraception, the idea of remaining faithful to the church's teaching with regard to contraception is seemingly difficult. What, what do you think is the best mindset to go forward more in a, in a positive direction, uh, to, to be in sync with the church's teaching, but also have sort of the capacity to do that? I think it's not only a question of being in sync with the church's teaching, it's being in sync with reality, with the nature of the human person and the nature of love which we receive from God, whereas the church's teaching is showing us the way towards that uh, supreme love. Uh, so certainly uh, what is important is the learning how to control sexuality in view of chastity. With euthanasia, we have a demographic situation coming up on us. A demographic? Yes, uh -huh. where there is going to be a disproportionate, very disproportionate number of elderly people 
and it will be seen as impossible by secular people to financially and uh, materially support them. And the overwhelming temptation is to encourage them or to manipulate them to die. Mm. This is happening now and it's going to increase dramatically in the years ahead. How does the church answer this situation? And as you say, there are many different, each person's circumstances are different, but the pressure is on and dramatically increasing for them to die. Well, I, I, I think what we meant began talking about contraception. I think clearly we can see that the economic crisis, which we are observing in the Western world, is a direct consequence of 1968, uh, of the rejection of Humanae Vitae, uh, of the rejection of the Church's teaching, and the approval of the sexual revolution, which has caused a demographic crash. And this is absolutely clear in Europe, uh, 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 that, this, that there is a grave disproportion. Now, the, uh, the moral issue of spending money and throwing the debt on the next generation, on a generation which has been partly aborted, which has not met with the generosity of the parents. Mm -hmm. This is the preparation of a violent conflict between generations. And I am seeing this brewing, huh? certainly, certainly in Europe. Huh? In America, at least, you have a public debate about the morality of extending the public debt and throwing the responsibility on the future generation. I just recently read that in France there's almost a million people between the age of 15 and 25 who are not studying, who are not working, who are unemployed, uh, maintained by the parents and so on. At some moment the parents will stop maintaining them, but if they're not formed, uh, and, and, but apart from that, I mean in Spain and Greece you have up to 40% of young uh, people who are unemployed, uh, but they are generally demonstrating, saying, we have the right to receive, because their parents received uh, grants for their studies, they received uh, cheaper housing, they received, and so they have this sense of entitlement, which is a consequence of socialism. Somebody has to give. And the states are finally saying, we cannot give. And there is a limit, you know, how far can we go? And of course, the state may produce money and uh, or, or be more and more in debt. Uh, but ultimately, there will be a, a violent conflict, and euthanasia is one aspect of this, of this uh, conflict, which is a direct consequence of the expulsion of the transmission of life in the living out of sexuality. Ultimately, it boils down to, to contraception. It's a, it's a consequence. Uh, now, you, your question is, how does the church respond? Well, the church responds not only by what the Pope says on the Angelus. We have the church responds with the wisdom of, of, of centuries. Uh, the, the, the saints, the doctors of the church, you know, the, uh, the, the, the pastoral teaching of the, of the bishops, the sacraments which are being administered, you know, the prayer life, the, the, the ch and also the social services of the church. So the church doesn't have one simple quick answer on the issue. But I think the, uh, uh, there will come a, a moment uh, where the young people will need to hear, uh, will be glad to hear uh, from the church a voice which will be on their side uh, and a voice which will point to the uh, egoism of the hedonist generation that has distorted society here. Uh, and it's distorted society at a beginning at a very important focal point, uh, which is sexuality. It's not the most important point. Uh, we could say even more deeper, uh, the rejection of, of the grace of Christ is even more serious than the distortion of sexuality. Pride is worse than, than sexual sins. Uh, but, but it all adds up, uh, and we are seeing the consequences. Mm -hmm. Wow. Very, very good. Thank you very much, Father Gertrude. God bless you, and thank you for bringing us here. Yeah. Oh.